Gold 2. Zerg coming at you right now. We're going to be... Today we're going to be going with every... Uh, for the stream, we're going to be going with every race to Platinum 3. So we're like halfway there, basically. Sickest hair. Congrats again on the huge sub goal. Thank you, Inferex. Thank you. I was gold Zerg six years ago, as far, far as I got, apparently. You can do it, man. I believe you can come back to it. You can do it again. Why, why would a Cyril not go pool first, first Terran? Seems to result in playable position for him. Because he's confident that he can hold a uh, proxy Rex most of the time. It's not always a fun situation or a good situation to be like, I'm just gonna put myself behind every game. Because you also have, that's, that's kind of where like, that's kind of like high level shit for StarCraft. It's where like build order choices, it's, it's almost like rock, paper, scissors. But you have to kind of pick and choose where you want to go. And if you're someone who's really obvious, it's like, oh, this guy goes pool first every game. I'm just going to go uh, safe greed every time and always get a lead. Because that is what it's going to be. It's not going to be like, Cyril can just go pool first and for some reason he just still has a lead. That's not how it works. If he goes pool first and someone plays greedy, he's behind. He's going to be behind. And playing from behind kind of sucks. Yo, any good tricks to spawn larva on all hatcheries, or do you just select each one individually? You can't do all hatcheries at the same time. You can do it quickly, though, by with with a few different ways. Camera hockey is, you can do uh, spam, spacebar, inject, that whole thing. I personally recommend camera hockeys. Okay, so we have a zealot in his wall. He's currently boosting another gate. He does not have a natural. We are going to make a spine now. If there's no natural, you make a spine. That's the rule. And we can scout further into his base. Okay, my overlord's gonna die. We can come back down, I guess. There's not really gonna be anything here. We just wanna see if he made a natural or not. Yes, he did. And he's making multiple stalkers. So he's showing me his tech choice as well, which is stalker. Which is fine. Let's go ahead and, uh. We're actually. Here's the thing about Protoss we're not gonna wall this time against Protoss. Because, uh, sometimes I would, but the reason why I am not going to wall this time against Ferdas is because he's going Stalkers. So if I wall against Stalkers, I'm going to literally just lose my wall. If, if he chooses to attack me, my wall dies. And he chose to attack me just now. So I'm putting my building my buildings back here. Go and make a couple of gases. Okay, now we can make roaches. Third base because now we have roaches being made. Oh, 
we're making overlords and roaches the whole time. Every time we get up to like within 10 supply of my current supply, I make an overlord. And every time before an eject is going to pop off, I make an overlord. Because an eject is immediate like 20 supply boost right there. Okay. Here he attacks me, okay. So we'll aim of it. Inject, inject. Creep spread, creep spread, creep spread. We can re-rally to my third base because it looks like we're winning this fight really hard, so let's make drones. Now let's start another Evo and go 2-1. And we'll also start a, uh, that's micro there. I A moved him. I just A moved him. Now I, again, attack the front. Well, for the wall, attack the back behind the base. Attack the front in case there's a wall, attack behind the base. If we're going to just not pay attention to it. GG. GG. Now this phase of the game, we have double his supply again because this is an efficient build compared to a non-efficient build. Look at what his supply is when he moves out at me. So before he attacks me, he's got uh, a couple of gates. He's got he's doing a two gate robo attack. Where he's made units constantly off two gates. He's made gases as well. There's no gas being mined. He's not making pro he's making a probe. He's not making a probe off the natural. He's not fully saturated on, on in his natural by any means. He's currently down already on probes by a bit. When low numbers should actually be better for Protoss because Protoss is chrono boost before Zerg has inject. So not the not the greatest decision for the Protoss. This build is not very good, I would say. It's, it's, it's not like it's going to do damage. It's it's just zealots and stalkers. And an and, uh, immortal. So, like, mass slings would also destroy this. Uh, but, uh, yeah. It's, now that we, like, you know, we made our normal normal amount of roaches and we attack forward into the, the stalkers. And when we see, oh, our roaches are actually wanting to fight, we go into just making drones. Right now, we just make drones, because you know, the fight's over. We already know we won the fight. So even though we just took a fight like that and we, we won the fight really bad, we didn't just go, I got to all in him now. We got to just make mass roaches all game and attack. No, don't do that, because if you do that, and let's say hypothetically, <coughs> hypothetically, pretend with me here. Imagine this. Imagine if you had a robo bay here, okay? And imagine if you made like a disruptor. Or a Colossus. Or or just more Immortals. And let's say behind this, he's like, oh shit, let's make like four sentries. He has Warp Gate. He didn't even make Warp Gate. But let's just say hypothetically, he had Warp Gate and he makes a few sentries. And I try to attack his base. And I have a Colossus or Immortals or a Disruptor just pounding my roaches while I'm trying to break the wall over and over. And the first time I attack it, maybe I kill a gateway. Maybe I kill two gateways. But I lose a ton of roaches for it. I make more roaches again. And now this time around, he's got like twice the amount of robo units. And then he defends it even easier when he like rebuilds the gateways. Like I can put myself in a position where I'm going to all in and lose because I just over make roaches when I don't need to. But instead, if I just take control of the map again, because I killed an army, and then I make drones right now, what the hell can he do if my drone count goes up to 66 versus like 40 probes? Like I just, I just have a massive lead at that point then. And I can just then forever keep him on two bases until he dies. I can make it really hard for him to want to take a third base. A lot of people, when they play StarCraft, they play for the short game. They do not play for the long game. And the way you play for the long game is you get a lead, you keep that lead by not allowing your opponent to expand. Because if, if I'm going to try and kill the Protoss behind his wall, it's going to be much harder than if I attack this Protoss at a freshly open base with a third base, because then he has no walls to hide behind. He's just in the middle of nowhere. So my Roaches, or whatever the hell I'm going to make, get much better attack trades. Like, they actually get on top of his army a lot better. So it makes more sense to fight him in the open. Uh, uh, uh. Uh. 
Aia. Aia. District Slayer. The way I watch this moron gold league player, <laughs> it's pretty harsh. Uh, it's the same way Grandmaster would watch me play. It's not that he, I, like, here's the thing, okay? This is the thing. Here's the thing. This is how I see StarCraft. When you have players that are like, hey, man, when did you start playing StarCraft? And their answer is, oh, like, you know, earlier this year. Or a month ago, or maybe like two years ago, but I only play for like maybe an hour a day, or like three days a week. I don't get to play very often. You're comparing players like that, very, very casual or very new players, to players that are like, hey, how often do you play, Mr. Pro Gamer? Oh, I play about eight hours a day every day. Oh, that's a lot of fucking games. You're comparing players that play a shitload to players that play like almost very, very little to not at all. So it's it's a big difference in terms of knowledge of the game and how much how good you're going to be. So it's not really fair to like criticize them really hard about that. But that's why it's perfect for players that are more casual based or players that are new to see something like this because it gives it actually make, helps them understand without having to go through the process of experience to go oh if you play like this it actually is really good like playing like that actually works really well because it of whatever reason like this. This is not how I normally play the game. It makes a lot of sense. Because I feel like the only real inf this is this is something I'm going to say really fast as well. It's important. The only information a player has that's new to StarCraft or is not in the top level of StarCraft, the only information you have towards good StarCraft is casted tournaments. That's it. Like top level streams, I guess, and casted tournaments. And when you're watching players that play like that, what are you watching most of the time? You're usually watching how they micro units. Most of the time. You're watching them micro things. Because players that play in players that know what tournaments, first of all, are not gonna be like, watch this guy fucking inject larva. Holy crap! This guy is making supply depots. Whoa! Like, don't gives a shit. Everyone's gonna be like, this is so boring. Oh, why do I watch this game? They're gonna be like, wow, look at things dying over here. It's crazy. Holy crap. Like, explosions. They're gonna like make it more exciting by watching the micro. So you think micro is important, right? Which it is at high levels of play. And when you watch someone stream, you're not going to be like, he's not going to be like, watch me macro all day. He's going to be focusing on a micro a lot because he knows how to macro while not looking at my, he knows how to micro and macro while not looking at macro because he can do it off the screen because he does it with control groups. So it makes a lot more sense that a low level player will assume that's just how you play. Like that's, that's the important part of the game is you just need to worry about other things etc 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 like the 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 micro elements are way more important than everything else in starcraft but it's not true at all especially if you're low league so seeing something like this seeing me go through bronze to gm is like holy shit like vibes playing in a game the game in a way that i never really thought about doing i'm always trying to do innovations builds when i'm tearing and going for the widow mine drop crap now and doing bio builds and every time I lose the game, I just tell myself I need to split my marines a little harder. And that's not how you actually play the game. That's really not. That's how you play the game if you're really good. It's not how you play the game if you're new to the game or if you're low league, if you're casual, if you're just not that great at it yet. It's because there, it's, you're going to stay that way for a long time if you focus on the wrong things. So me doing this, it might not be the most exciting thing. Might, you might not be like, holy shit, Vibe, I am, like, blown away by you doing the same build over and over. Holy crap, this is so exciting. Like, some of you might think that because you actually feel like you're learning something. But I, I've already had plenty of people come in my chat and be like, I'm so fucking bored, Vibe. Can you please stop doing Bronze Jam? Like, I'm, I'm fucking Master League, and this is really boring to watch. And sure, that's fine. All right, anyways, we'll talk about this game more. He's zealot all inning me, guys. Here's what we do. We make roaches. Okay? We can be like this. We take my queen and go, Wee! Run away! Make roaches. Wee! Run away! We're making roaches. 
queen. Run away. This is very limited amounts of micro here. Run away, queen. We're making roaches. Run away, queen. Oh, he's dead. Oh, dang it. Okay, so let's fix my drone count. What are we what are we looking at? Three drones down here. Three drones down. So make a third drone here. As soon as I can. Drone. And now what are we at here? We're four drones down here. We have a lot of roaches. Let's go ahead and attack them with our roaches. Shift they move. Cool. Now let's take a third base and a second. And fix my drone count again. Fix the drones. Fix the drones. We need four more drones here. We can spread some creep. We can take a third. We can make some drones. Start the weapons level two. We can even start another Evo chamber. Inject, inject. Start another Evo. And we can also start a Hydrogen. Because now we're starting to saturate our third as well. Our forces are under attack. Now I'll saturate my third base with all my dudes. Now we're just making drones for my third. How's my army doing? It's doing fine. It's still alive. Cool. See what's happening right now is this guy's freaking out. And he's having to micro this really hard, and he's spending a lot of time on that. And look at my money. Watch my money. Every time we get enough money for a drone, we make a drone. We're maximizing our macro really hard right now. Every time we have a larva, it's fucking spent immediately. We're not wasting time. We're injecting. We're making drones. We're doing basically GM level macro because we're not missing a beat here. With letting larva just sit there stacked up. This, that's the difference. Every time a, a larva is immediately made into a drone, we're macroing like we're GM. And we're not doing that if we're fucking microing this really hard and we're like, Oh god, the roaches need to kill! We need to win the game! Sure, winning the game is nice, right? But how about we just do it in about two minutes rather than right now? Right now, all we're doing is we're crippling our opponent. We're, we're kicking him in the nuts. Really hard. Alright, we're at 65. We'll go to 66 drones. Now we can make more roaches. More roaches, guys. More roaches. Oh, we need to set up my main gas. I forgot. More roaches. More roaches. More roaches. What's my drone count? 68? That's good enough. That's good. Boom. Inject. Creep. 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 Inject. 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 Roaches, we're gonna do this up till 120 supply, then we're gonna make hydras. Alright, we're gonna do this till 120 supply, then we're gonna finish off some more drones to 75, and then we're gonna make hydras. So we can saturate my other base a little bit. So we're 122, now we drone to 75 supply. Boom! 75 supply of drones. Right there, you can mouse over the top right supply and see that. Now we make hydras. Keep starting my creep while I'm waiting. See, we're just gaining more control of the game the whole time here. How are my roaches doing? They're still alive. They're gonna die now though, because there's an immortal there. But those thor those roaches have been great. They've been wonderful. They've done a great job. Our are under we can start an infestation pit. And now we're gonna set we're gonna hydra until we're at 180. 180 Mid supply. And then we'll make roaches to finish off to 200. Because we have a bunch of roaches again right now. So we're balancing our composition. Inject. 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 Uh, in like two seconds I can. Creep. Creep. Always do it together. Creep. Creep. Hydras. We're almost there. We can start a hive now as well. And we can also transfer some drones over. Because look, look, we're paying attention to our macro fully. Every time something's inefficient, we grab it. This is good. This is good. This is perfect now as well. Let's take another base, because in case more bases start mining out, we want to have more things to send drones over to. We can also take these gases now. We'll make some more drones to fix it. There, we're at 75 drones again. Inject. 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 Make some hydras. We're about to be at 180. Boom. Boom. 
Boom. 180. Now we can finish off with roaches. Roaches! Look at my army. It's humongous. We're also about to be 2-2. Roach. Inject. 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 Now my overlord, my last overlord that I made is going to pop off here in just a second. And we can saturate this gas to fully saturate our stuff. Make four more roaches. Cool. Now let's go like this. Get an overseer. Go like this. A move. Shift. A. 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 So now we have all of it. Ramp first, wall first, and then break, break, break base. Ramp first, break base. And we can have our overlord just follow a hydra. Right? And we pick a hydra and follow it. And now, let's go back to macroing. Let's make sure everything is running smoothly. Hive's done. We can go inject. 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 We just did creep a second ago. On that, we're good. Upgrades. 3-3. Three, three. Saturated mineral lines are starting to run. We're running out of minerals here. Send it to my new base. I just started. I just finished. This base is good. This base is good. This base is still good. And every single second we lose supply, Hydra. Or Roach. Well, you pick one. Pick one. It's fine. GG. GG. Alright. Now check it out. Here we go. Go back to the first fight. This is the first fight, guys. Back up a little more. Here's the first fight, what it looked like. This is what it looked like when we first got there. Let's look at his macros well while this is happening. Uh, income tab, we're ahead on drones by a bit. Um, he's got 42. That's pretty much full saturation on two bases. Really close. Not quite, but pretty close. Well, let's watch his money. And let's watch his production, and let's watch our money in our production while we watch this fight. Now he's pulled all of his probes. Every single probe. All said and done, we have a 12 supply Protoss versus 136 supply Zerg. <laughs> this guy was, he was like fixated on fighting this for so long and he had a thousand minerals for a good portion of that fight as well. And the reason why this all happened is because he put himself in a situation where he had to micro. He did a build that required him to micro. Also, he blocked this ramp really Poorly. This, this ramp is off. This is an awful block on this ramp. It's pretty bad. Uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, he put himself in a position where he's doing a build with zealots early that had to be microed, and now he's absolutely screwed. Oops. Because now with our final attack, this is what it looks like. We're max supply versus a 38 supply Protoss. His upgrades are also. 101, one. ours are 2-2. Two, two. I don't think he even has a forge anymore, so he can't even upgrade anymore. And our upgrades are going 3-3 three, three right now. So the, the game is obviously over. Why not GG at that point? Because, here's the thing. He probably thought I was spending a lot of... Like, th there's a chance I was spending a lot of time watching my roaches if I'm in Gold League. And I was also not macroing shit. And there's a chance I'm not at a position... Where I have 76 drones versus 27 probes. And there's a chance that I'm not I'm not wealthy. There's a chance that I might not have very much. That's what he's banking the game on. There's a chance that I didn't macro properly. But if I do, he's absolutely dead. <laughs> and, and we did, so it's a maxed out Zerg versus a 28 supply Protoss.
rainbow. Yeah. All right, guys. We're gold one. Gold one zerg. 